And this is where the famous letter by the Roman Aurelius Silentulus comes into play, which describes Jesus Christ in great detail. We have numerous eyewitness accounts, and they left letters. Pontius Pilate regularly wrote to Rome to Caesar. We know that Pontius Pilate was the governor of the Holy Land of Israel-Palestine at that time. During the years that Jesus was ministering there, Pilate could often listen to him from his portico. We also have the letter of the high priest Gamaliel, who was the Apostle Paul's teacher. High priest Gamaliel believed in Jesus Christ after Christ's resurrection, and his letter describing Jesus Christ is in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The only physical description of Jesus that does exist is from a copy of a letter from the Roman consul Lentulus to the Roman Emperor Tiberius, discovered in a monastery with copies of other ancient documents. According to the copy, the original letter dated to the twelfth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius. We have historical verification that a Roman consul named Lentulus was in Judea at the time of Jesus' trial and crucifixion. His influential family is mentioned by Jewish historian Josephus in the book Antiquities of the Jews. However, scholars cannot agree on the authenticity of the letter. Lentulus' letter was an official report to Emperor Tiberius. He describes Jesus as having a noble and lively face, with fair and slightly wavy hair, black and strongly curving eyebrows, intense penetrating blue eyes, and an expression of wondrous grace. His nose is rather long, his beard is almost blonde, although not very long. His hair is quite long and has never seen a pair of scissors. His neck is slightly inclined so that he never appears to be bitter or arrogant. His tanned face is the colour of ripe corn and well proportioned. It gives the impression of gravity and wisdom, sweetness and goodness, and is completely lacking in any sign of anger. This is what Lentulus, a Roman official in the province of Judea during the time of Tiberius Caesar, upon seeing Christ and noting his wonderful works, his preaching, his endless miracles and other amazing things about him, wrote to the Roman Senate. There has appeared in these times, and still is, a man of great power named Jesus Christ, who is called by the Gentiles the prophet of truth, whom his disciples call the Son of God. He raises the dead and heals diseases, a man of middling height and comely appearance, with a reverent countenance that inspires both love and fear. He has hair the hue of an unripe hazelnut, smooth almost down to his ears, but from the ears in curling locks, somewhat darker and more shining, waving over his shoulders. He has a parting in the middle of his head according to the fashion of the Nazarenes, a brow smooth and very calm, with a face without wrinkle or blemish, made beautiful by a moderate colour. There is no fall to be found in his nose and mouth. He has a full beard, the colour of his hair, not long but a little forked at the chin. He has an expression that is simple and mature, with grey clear eyes. In rebuke, he is terrible. In admonition, kind and lovable, cheerful yet maintaining gravity. Sometimes he has wept, but never laughed. In stature, he is tall and straight, with fair hands and arms. In conversation, he is grave, reserved and modest, so that he was rightly called by the prophet fairer than the children of men. This description follows traditional portraits closely and was likely written in the presence of one. The Greeks also had similar detailed descriptions of the Apostles and the Virgin, just as they did of the heroes of Troy. But guess what? We can take the description from Lentulus' letter and combine it with the information gathered from the figure on the Shroud of Turin to complete the physical description of Christ. Professor Giovanni Giudica Cordiglia, a Shroud of Turin scholar, used his experience as a doctor and university professor of forensic medicine to interpret the data collected from the shroud. He wrote, The man who was wrapped in the shroud was a man of great beauty and uncommon stature. He was about 1 meter and 80 centimeters tall, with a perfectly proportioned physique, lithe and harmonious. He was a standard type in the most literal sense of the phrase. Although the cloth has suffered much damage, we can see that his face was very soft and gentle, rather long, with a broad, straight forehead. The nose is straight and turned slightly downwards, the cheeks are large and slightly protruding, 
From all the anthropometric calculations so far made, it seems that Christ was physically in far better shape than the average man. Through a complicated process of elaborating his facial data, I can conclude that his cranial capacity was 1575 cc, which would place him in the megalocephalic category with a cranial capacity coefficient of 95, indicating that the weight of his brain was 1492 grams. This is far greater than average, suggesting a person of extraordinary